Hi everybody, this is Agnesa from No Sediment and today we're going to talk about what really makes a wine good or even great. First of all, I would like to point out that good or even great wine means different things to each of us and sometimes even different things depending on the situation. For example, some might call wine good because it has no faults. In fact, I talk about most common wine faults in one of my early videos, I will link it here. But good and clean wine does not necessarily make it great and probably it will not score many points from critics on its own. In my Masters of Wine studies, we follow a simple rule to discuss the quality of wine, which is balance, intensity and concentration, complexity and length. I will break down each of these four factors and in the end I will discuss two additional ones, which also contribute to the quality, but not necessarily always. Balance is interesting. I often hear people describing wine as balanced, but they rarely discuss which elements are actually in balance in the wine. I don't mind wines with high levels of tannins or high acidity, as long as there is weight, fruit and mid palate to back it up. Likewise, I don't mind oak aging, as long as it's not overpowering the fruit and higher alcohol in wines, as long as it is not the only element I feel on the nose or palate. And I am strong believer that great wine tastes great at any stage of its development. Meaning if the tannins are high, harsh and overpowering the palate, they will not probably smoothen up with years and allow fruit to shine. Fruits will most likely fade, while tannins will continue to scrape your tongue and cheeks. While good quality young wine might seem a bit nervy and tense, you also get that depth and intensity that will unravel with years in the bottle. Some actually like to separate intensity and concentration, including myself. But I don't want to make this video too hard to follow, so for now I will say that these elements represent similar things in wine. They refer to how concentrated and intense are the fruit flavors in wine, meaning the higher intensity and concentration of the fruits, the better the quality. While wines lower in quality might seem plain, dull and diluted with quickly fading palate. Highly concentrated wine usually will show greater length and capacity to age. I have talked about complexity in wine in many of my videos. For me, complex wine is the opposite of one-dimensional one. Some wines have expressive immediate fruit, and no matter from which angle you are looking, tasting, smelling it, it tastes the same, it has no depth. Complex wines tend to show layers of flavors, which sometimes reveal themselves at different times, which is why we often say that wine needs to breathe a little. It might show different fruit flavors of different ripeness and weight, lighter floral notes and minerality, whatever that is to each of us. Winemaker might introduce different elements in wine through winemaking techniques, such as oak fermentation and aging, malolactic fermentation, aging on the leaves, or even intentionally creating an environment for funky elements to enter the wine. Storing a high quality wines in the bottle will create other aroma and flavor compounds that will add to its complexity. So yes, wine that shows different elements in the glass rather than just simple primary fruit is considered of higher quality. Length is often referred as aftertaste and this one might be the easiest to grasp. Wine that shows long-lasting aftertaste is considered of better quality than the one where aftertaste fades within the seconds. I would also like to point out that acidity on its own or bitter and astringent sensation from the tannins is not considered as aftertaste. Flavors such as white blossom, sour cherry and ripe figs are what should be lingering on your palate instead of structural elements of wine. Some also point out that wine should show a typicity of its origin 
and or grape or grape varieties. In my opinion, classical representation of terroir adds to wine's quality. However, wine can be great and of premium quality even if it comes from classic wine region and it doesn't represent it in the glass. Potential to age is one more controversial factor which people like to consider as contributing parts to the wine's quality. Yes, wine that not only can withstand test of time in the bottle without losing its quality, but even develop new aroma and flavor elements, thus becoming more complex, is considered a great quality wine. But they are high quality wines that are meant for immediate consumption and will not age well, let alone become more complex. Does that mean that they are inferior to those that can age? I think not. Think of Prosecco, juicy Pinot Grigio and refreshing Provence Rosé wines. These wines can be very high quality even though they are not meant for aging. As in all wine categories, they are not so good quality wines and they are great examples. Yet they are simply not made in a style that is meant for aging. But they do show great aroma intensity, fruit concentration, balance of different elements in wine, and pleasant, bright fruit-driven length. What more do we wish to have in wine? Still, I would also like to point out that good wine or even great wine can be very subjective. First of all, it usually has to do a lot with what kind of style you prefer. It might be very difficult to mark wine as great if you're simply not a fan of this style, be it sweet wine, orange wine, or rich, full-bodied, oak-aged red wine. To be completely honest, and I might get a lot of hate for this, I'm not sure that every wine critic out there is completely objective as well when scoring and evaluating wine. Therefore, do not feel bad if the wine that you think is good not necessarily is scored as good by critics or your friends. After all, good or even great wine is the one that you like the best. If you found this video useful, you might also be interested in my other video on 5 things to consider when choosing wine to age.